In this FAQ video, I'll talk about lightning surge protectors, when to use them, and how to install one. A lightning surge protector protects your signal booster and any connected components from getting fried if the outside antenna should be struck by lightning. Most often, outside antennas are placed high on the roof of the home, which can make them a possible target for lightning strikes. Lightning surge protectors are only available for building boosters, as it is nearly impossible that an antenna on your vehicle will be struck by lightning. If lightning should strike your outside antenna, without a lightning surge protector, the energy would pass through the antenna cable down to your booster and out the connecting cable, frying any electrical components to the system. With a lightning surge protector installed, the energy from the lightning would pass through the antenna cable to the surge protector and would be grounded there. The energy would dissipate at this point like blowing a fuse, keeping all of your equipment down line safe. Either way, there's no chance of lightning passing out of any of the connected components and into the building, so there's no risk of personal injury involved. A lightning surge protector will protect your booster, saving you time and money. You'll just need to replace an inexpensive surge protector cartridge instead of an entire signal booster system. To install a lightning surge protector, follow these steps. Install the lightning surge protector close to the outside or external antenna. Attach a cable from the outside antenna to the surge protector. You can purchase short two-foot cables for this purpose. Attach the other end of the surge protector to the cable running to your signal booster. The surge protector is bi-directional, meaning it doesn't matter which way you install it. You can install it backwards. Attach a ground wire up to 10 gauge to the lightning surge protector by inserting the wire into the ground connector and crimping it with a crimping tool. Connect the wire to a grounding bus or grounding point nearby. Be sure to check local electrical code requirements for grounding. Most require a 10 or 12 gauge copper wire from the surge protector to the grounding rod. The depth of the grounding rod will be based on local department code requirements. Tighten all of the connections up and you're done. If lightning does strike your antenna, Simply remove the replaceable cartridge from the surge protector, insert a new one, and tighten down the cap. Then you're back up and running. WeBoost offers lightning surge protectors for various cable types, so whichever type of cable you're using, you can find a surge protector to match. I hope this was helpful. If you've got any questions about lightning surge protectors, give us a call or check out our support center online. Subscribe to our channel for more videos like this every week. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.